Get your, get your Bible out. And I want you to think. Um, as we start, we'll go, we'll go to the word of prayer here in a minute. But I want you to think of things that are, that come in fours or things associated with the number four in the Bible. I want you to think about that and make a list in your mind if you want to or write it down on paper if you want to. And we'll just kind of go around the room and, and I'll mention some things and we'll talk about that because it has everything to do. I'm going to show you a video. And those of you online, you, if you are not really able to see it well, don't worry. When I get back and edit the video, then um, uh, you'll be able to see it, see it better. But I'm going to show you something here in a little bit that I'm going to show you some videos that were that were taken by our the United States military of flying craft that defy the laws of physics. Okay, does everybody understand what physics is? Okay, like this is gravity. All right? And when you get in your car, everything that we have that moves in this world, that man has built, takes something and puts it into a motor and pushes something out the backside. And that's how we propel things like cars and airplanes and jet engines and trains and things like that. Okay. But I'm going to show you some things that are going to defy those laws. When something flies through the air, what's the, what's the biggest thing that it has pushing against it? Air. Okay? When something is going through the water, like a submarine, what's the... What is it that's pushing against a submarine that keeps it from going a thousand miles an hour? Water. Okay. So I'm going to show you a video clip of some vehicles that defy those physics. They can go through water and the water does not react to it going through it. Like if you throw a stone in a pond and it makes a splash, the water doesn't react that way to these vehicles. And then tonight I will try my best to explain why. This is one of the hardest, most difficult teachings that I have is explaining what I call the fourth dimension. Okay, let's go to prayer. Father, we love you. We thank you, Lord, for gathering us together. We thank you, Lord, for allowing us to be online tonight. I believe that was your will. And I pray, Heavenly Father, God, that you would guide us as we go through your word. Open up our minds. Show us great and mighty things that we know not, the way Jeremiah said. And I pray, dear God, that, that through what we learn tonight, we would understand better the things that happen in the Bible, the miracles, some of the miracles that were done in the Bible, we would understand them better. Bless your word tonight. Teach us great and mighty things, we pray in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. All right. Now, who's got a list of things that are like four in the Bible, or it could be 40? Or 400 or 4,000 or 4 million or 4 billion or what? Kevin? Uh, what's the depth and height? Okay, there you go. That's a good one. That's, I'm going to use that one. What else? What did you say? Width, breadth, depth, yeah. and height. But I said them slower and better than he said them. So, yeah. Ephesians 6, 12. Uh, principalities. Fli principalities. Powers. powers. 
rulers of the darkness of this world and spiritual wickedness in high places. There's a reason why there's four of them. Okay, who's got another one? Yeah, exactly. Four Gospels. And what are the four Gospels about? Who, let me say, who are they about? And where did he come from? Oh, this is an easy one. Where did Jesus come from? Heaven. And in heaven, there's a city called Heavenly Jerusalem uh, in Galatians 4. And then in Revelation, it, there is a new Jerusalem. How many walls does it have? Four. Okay. And that, that means something. It represents something. So somebody give me some, some more. Things with four, forty, four hundred. Okay, it rained. Why does now think about this question? If it rains for forty days, isn't it obvious that it would, would rain for forty nights as well? So why does the Bible have to tell us it rained forty days and forty nights? I think there's a reason there. Listen, there is a reason for every word in this book. There's a reason why God said it the way he said it. Give me some more. You're doing pretty good. Four horsemen. The four horsemen. Exactly. We have the four horsemen in Revelation chapter six. In the book of Zechariah, we have we have four chariots with horses on them and what did God say those four chariots and horses were? Does anybody remember? No, that's in Revelation chapter that's in Revelation chapter six. Turn to turn let's go to Zechariah. Let's find out what he said. Is it Zechariah or Zephaniah? I get the two confused all the time. Ze Zech and Zeph. Let's see here. If, if we find it in Zechariah, then we'll know it's in Zechariah. If we don't find it in Zechariah, we know that it's in Zephaniah. Yes. Look at this. Zechariah chapter 6. In the first chariot were red horses. Second chariot, black horses. The third chariot, what were we talking about last night? Chariots. Okay? So these chariots are not made of wood and metal wheels and motors and engines. They're not made of that. These chariots are made of something different. Uh, and the third chariot, white, white horses, and the fourth chariot, grizzled and bay horses. Then I answered and said unto the angel that talked with me, what are these, my Lord? Now look at that next verse and find out what they are. Four spirits. These chariots are four spirits. So now, let's take that and think about this for a minute. What we talked about last night, the idea that these things flying around in the sky that people are seeing, they're not made of plastic, they're not made of um, motor parts, they're not just machines. What are they according to the Bible? Spirits. They're spirits. And in a minute, we're going to find out how these flying objects that are unidentified, how they're able to do what they're able to do. Who's got some, some other fours or 40s or 400s or whatever. 
Yes. Four men in the fire. And would you say that those four men defied the laws of physics inside that fiery furnace? Would you say that? Would you say that that's definitely what's going on? Because here's this fire that's so hot, the guys that threw them in there died of the heat just standing outside of the furnace. That's how hot it was. And yet there's three men in there and the fourth one is a son of the gods, right? No, that's what all the stupid Bibles say. He is a son of God. And because he was in there, he was saving the other three from being affected by the laws of physics. They defied the laws of physics so much that when they came out of the fiery furnace, how did they smell? They didn't. Like there, the Bible says there wasn't even the smell of smoke on them. It's like, you know, back in the day when people could smoke everywhere and I'd walk into a gas station and pay for the gas. I'd get back to the car. My wife would say, did you enjoy that cigarette? She could smell it on me. Okay. But they were so unaffected by the laws of physics because of this number right here. Give me another one. 440, 400, 4,000. Yeah. Yes. Doing well. 400 evil spirits that God was trying to get the things out of. How about, okay, the 400 prophets who prophesied to Abra, to uh, Ahab telling him that's what you were thinking of right the 400 prophets who were telling Ahab yes you can go to war and what did they have in them say, saying that out of their mouths they had a spirit a lying spirit inside of them saying that and why were there 400 of them Okay, because if there is a true gospel, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, then there is a false gospel. And, th and let's look at something. Take your Bible, first turn to uh, 2 Corinthians 11, and look, boy, I may never get done tonight. <laughs> But I look for second Corinthians 11 verse three, but I fear lest by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, your mind, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus whom we have not preached, or if you receive another spirit, which you have not received or another gospel. Now that's the first time Paul says that another gospel. Now turn over to Galatians, just a couple pages. Galatians chapter 1 and he says verse 6 I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto what that's the second time he referenced a different gospel now look at verse 7 which is not another but there would be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ but though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel, that's the third time he mentions it, unto you than, than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. At verse 9, as we have said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you, that's the fourth time he says it. There are four times that the Apostle Paul, the Bible, references another gospel, another gospel, any other gospel, any other gospel. Four times. And that goes along with those 400 prophets who prophesied falsely to Ahab. And what was the result of their prophesying to Ahab? What happened to Ahab? He got killed. 
So when those who preach another gospel, when they preach it, what's the result to those who believe that gospel? They're going to die. Okay, they're going to go down into the heart of the earth. That's where hell is. All right. Uh, you mentioned 40 days and and 40 nights. Okay. Now we've already seen now that this number four, uh, because you brought it up, it represents principalities and powers and rulers of the darkness of this world and spiritual wickedness in high places. So why did it rain 40 days and 40 nights? Because it's a prophecy of a future event that has to do with the number four and what it's related to. And what it's related to is principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, spiritual wickedness in high places. So I mentioned last night that God is gonna kick out of heaven a third of the angels. I didn't mention this last night, but we know in Revelation 9 that God is going to release a horde of angels, evil angels, out of the bottomless pit in Revelation 9, correct? Okay, so during the 40 days and 40 nights in the days of Noah, where did all that water come from? Two places. It came down from heaven. It fell down from heaven and it came up from the lower parts of the earth. That is exactly where the devils are coming from in Revelation 9, they're coming up out of the heart of the earth. In Revelation 12, they're coming down from the heaven. And that's why the Bible's telling you that it took 40 days and 40 nights. They're opposite of each other, but that number four is showing you that this is a, an event that's going to take place that's going to involve the, the, takeover of this world by spirits how many kingdoms did daniel speak of based upon nebuchadnezzar's dream four turn to daniel two man i'm i'm spending some i'm spending a lot of time just setting up for the i've got to the presentation yet but I want you to, I, I want you to, when you see this, I want you to get it. I want you to understand it. So Ezekiel, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, Daniel, chapter two. First of all, um, how many counselors did Nebuchadnezzar have according to Daniel 2, verse 2. Magicians, astrologers, sorcerers, and Chaldeans. And were they lying to him? Sure they were. And then later on, how many of God's men prayed that God would give the understanding of Nebuchadnezzar's dream so that they wouldn't get their heads cut off. Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Because God's four are always better than the devil's four. Isn't the real gospel better than Let's say Ellen White's gospel. You know who Ellen White is? She's the woman who received from an angel from heaven a different gospel. An angel from heaven showed her that the fourth commandment still had to be obeyed or you cannot go to heaven. So you must go to church on Saturday. That was the gospel that she received from another, from an angel. And is that gospel blessed or cursed? It's cursed. You see, our gospel is better than their gospel, isn't it? How about the gospel of the Mormon church? Is our gospel better than 
an angel moron eye that come down from heaven and showed Joseph Smith where a secret book was written in a language that nobody knows and he put on these secret glasses and was able to decode the writing on the sacred golden book and only he knows what it says and he wrote it all down called it the Book of Mormon is our better is our gospel better than his gospel that was brought by an angel yes or how about the the gospel of the Catholic Church that's delivered by multiple angels Marian apparitions saints who are appearing to different people and telling them to pray the rosary every day to take the Eucharist every day to eat the mass every day and if you keep doing that then God will bless you and your time in purgatory will be cut in half and you won't have to spend as much time in purgatory is our gospel better than their gospel amen, amen it is okay so now did we cover did we cover enough fours in the Bible you think you understand what what the gist of it is okay now um, let's do this uh, notice that in Ezekiel 1 let's turn our Bibles there we were in Daniel so let's go to Ezekiel 1 and let's notice something about the chariot that God rides also out of the midst there, thereof came the likeness of how many living creatures four four living creatures and this was their appearance they had the likeness of a man I have a laser on here I think I could probably kill you with it this was their appearance they had the likeness of a man and they everyone had four faces notice the number four and they had how many wings four wings and their feet were straight feet the sole of their feet was like the sole of a calf's foot and they sparkled like the color of burnished brass and they had the hands of a man under their wings on their how many sides four sides and they four had their faces and their wings and their wings were joined one to another and they turned not when they went they went everyone straight forward as for the likeness of their faces they four had the face of a man the face of a lion and on the right side they four had the face of an ox on the left side they four also had the face of an eagle thus were their faces and their wings stretched upward two wings everyone were joined one to another and two covered their bodies and they went everyone straight forward whether the spirit was to go they went and they turned not when they went as for the likeness of the living creatures their appearance was like burning coals of fire because what are angels made of fire he's made his spirits out of fire that's their substance that's their that's like we're made of carbon based we're carbon based life forms we're made out of dirt but these things are made out of a spiritual type of fire we can't understand it but we believe it they were made out of a spirit fire um, and the like the appearance of lamps and it went up and down among the living creatures and the fire was bright and out of the fire went forth lightning and the living creatures ran and returned as the appearance of a flash of lightning now look at look at look at how these creatures moved they were here one second and the next second they were over there and then they were over here again they had the ability to move and go forward without accelerating they had the ability to stop without decelerating slowing down and they had the appearance like lightning to be able to go this way and then immediately that way because that's what lightning does it goes in all different crazy directions and does it have to you know when an airplane turns right does it just go like that and turn right no it has to, I have a friend who's 
probably watching now. Hi, John Damano. He flies planes, and in order to get it to turn left, they got to bank it. And it's a big, slow circle that they have to make. It would defy the laws of physics if they just went like that, and it would kill everybody in the plane. Because your body's traveling at the same speed the airplane is, and if the airplane suddenly goes another direction, you're still traveling this way, and you're going to be smashed up against the wall, and you're going to be killed. Okay? So that's what defying the laws of physics means. All right? Now, 1 Kings 7. This is the... the um, the temple that Solomon built and Solomon Solomon came along before Ezekiel so God inspired Solomon to build the the thing that was going to hold the Ark of the Covenant exactly this way notice this uh, let's see here and every base, he's talking about in the most holy place, every base had four brazen or brass wheels. The thing that's going to hold the Ark of the Covenant in the most holy place, Solomon was given instructions by the Holy Spirit to make it a chariot. Isn't that, isn't that to me that's interesting, that's neat. Because Solomon never read Ezekiel. He never read Ezekiel's description of God's chariot coming down from heaven. So how did Solomon know that when he built the most holy place where the Ark of the Covenant was, the throne of God, that he was to build a chariot inside there? How did he know that? By God. Four brazen wheels and plates of brass and the four corners thereof had undersetters. And the laver, and under the laver were undersetters molten at the side of every addition, and the mouth of it within the chapiter, which means the, the top, the capital, and above was a cubit, but the mouth thereof was round after the work of, a, of the base, a cubit and a half, and also upon the mouth of it were gravings with their borders, four square, not round. For, for what? How is Jerusalem built? New Jerusalem? Four square, not round. And under the borders were four wheels. And the axle trees and the wheels were joined to the base. And the height of a wheel was a cubit and a half. And the work of the wheels was like the work of a chariot wheel. There, no, let's count this. Their axle trees, their knaves, their fellows, and their spokes were all molten. There were four parts to each one of these four wheels. Solomon, by his wisdom, knew that what he was to build to put the Ark of the Covenant on was a chariot because God rides a chariot. A car way better than yours. Amen? All right, now... I'm going to switch over and I'm going to show you a video. What you're going to see, and I'll try to describe this as we go. This was on Fox News. This video was taken from a United States naval ship. And this is an unidentified flying object or an unknown aerial phenomenon. Notice how it just went under the water without making a splash. Our own Navy captured this thing on, on FLIR video, forward-looking infrared video. And as the sailors are talking, at one point they say, splash, which means that it went into the water. But when it went into the water, it didn't make a splash. It went into the water and disappeared. And they don't know to this day 
how they did it. This is relatively new video. This came out this year. Okay. It was leaked out of the Pentagon, given to Jeremy Corbell, who has done some pretty good documentaries on uh, UFOs. Um, see how it goes into the water and just disappears. Here's one taken by a cell phone by one of our pilots. These triangle-shaped UFOs, there were about 20 of them, and they were following this United States Navy ship for days. And they were capturing them. Now, this video is what I want you to see. Down in Aguadilla, Puerto Rico, Puerto Rico is part of the United States, there is, a, there is an, uh, an air base there that belongs to the Department of Homeland Security. They found, there it is right there, they saw an unidentified flying object flying across Homeland Security Air Force Base. That's an act of war. If you are an enemy, if you are Russia or China and you are flying a plane right over one of our air bases, that's an act of war. And this is infrared video because if they switch to camera, they couldn't see it. That defies the laws of physics. It's there, but it's invisible. But it is leaving a signature, so they switched it over to forward-looking infrared, and they were able to capture it that way. Now, what you're going to see is, is that you're going to see this thing go down. It's, there it is, flying over the base. This is Aguadilla um, Air Base in Puerto Rico. This is the ocean. And you're going to see this thing go down into the water and disappear and not make... There it goes. Did it splash? No, there it is again. There it goes again. And it's going to come back up again in a minute. And notice that when it hits the water, it doesn't slow down. It keeps going at the exact same speed. It's fixed. There it is again. It rose back up. Now it's going to split in two. See it? Now there's two of them. One's gone into the water. This one's going to disappear into the water. Never to be seen again. It defies the laws of physics. Meaning, it wasn't from this world. Didn't come from, wasn't built by us, wasn't built by the Russians, wasn't built by the Chinese, because none of us right now have the technology to go from our three-dimensional universe to what we'll call the fourth dimension. We can call it the spiritual dimension. We can call it the spiritual realm because we know that's the realm that they live in. That's the realm that the principalities and the powers and the rulers of the darkness and the spiritual wickedness in high places live in. That's the, that's the place where the red horses, the white, or the, excuse me, the red chariots, the white chariots, the black chariots, and the Grizzled and Bay chariots, that's the realm that they live in as well. And we're going to see some other things that are in that realm too. Now, so Daniel says concerning the fourth kingdom. So everything that we've learned so far about this number four, and when we see a fourth and final kingdom, 
Should we believe that that fourth kingdom is a kingdom of human beings? Like Russians or the Chinese or the, hey, the Canadians, they could come after us at any day now. We could fight a war with the Canadians. Or would they come from some other place? Take your Bible. You Take your Bible. You're in Ezekiel. Take your Bible and turn to um, Ezekiel 37. No, Ezekiel, 30, 30, Ezekiel 38. Ezekiel 38 is a future war that's going to take place against Jerusalem. Now, let's read this for a minute. Son of man, set thy face against Gog, the land of Magog, the chief prince. What are principalities? They're princes. So Magog is the chief prince. Is he a man? Or is he a spirit? Do you believe spirits are territorial? Are animals territorial? Then spirits are too. The chief prince of Meshach and Tubal and prophesy against him and say, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I'm against thee, O Gog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal. And I will turn thee back and put hooks into thy jaws and I will bring thee forth. Now pay attention to this. I will bring thee forth and all thine army, horses, and horsemen, all of them clothed with all sorts of armor, even a great company with bucklers and shields, and all of them handling swords. Now, let's say that this is Russia. Because that's what a lot of prophecy experts said. Well, this is Russia coming against invading Jerusalem. It's Russia. If Russia's going to show up and fight the Israeli army with swords and horses, are they going to win? Not a chance. Not a chance. So do you still believe the Bible's right? And if the Bible says that this army is coming with horses and chariots and swords, are they coming with horses and swords? Yes. But this army then can't be from this dimension because they could easily be destroyed. So they're coming from a higher dimension and their swords, we have no defense against them. Satan throws darts at us, doesn't he? Now, if, if Satan was a, a man, a teenager, and he was throwing darts at you, would it hurt? Yes. Would it kill you? No. But he's not throwing regular darts. What is he throwing? Fiery darts. Because what is he made of since he's a spirit? Fire. It's a different type of dart and it's a deadly one. Because the fiery serpents that went after the Israelites... It killed them, didn't they? Everyone they bit died instantly of the bite that they had received because they were fiery serpents. Okay? So the fourth kingdom is not and cannot be a kingdom of any human nation from this world. Because then they could be easily defeated. So this fourth kingdom 
doesn't come from here. This fourth kingdom is a kingdom of principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness of this world, and spiritual wickedness in high places. And I believe they have chariots too. Okay? Now, um, let's see here. Notice Genesis 1. This is the creation week. And God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night. And let them be for, note, let's count this, signs and for seasons and for days and for years. And how many seasons are there? It's four. Okay. So that's pretty interesting, isn't it? Signs, seasons, days, and years. So what, when, when, when Satan takes his tail and drags a third of the stars and casts them down to the earth, what, what did he really cast down to the earth? Stars or angels? Angels, evil angels that fought a war with him and lost because Michael and the other two third angels prevailed against them. And so they're kicked out of heaven and cast down to the earth. So that's what God did. And by the way, what day did he do this on? Day four. Let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. And it was so, and God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, the lesser light to rule the night. We know the sun and the moon, correct? That's the sun is the greater light, the moon's the lesser light. If you want to apply it to the Bible, you could say that the New Testament is the greater light, the Old Testament is the lesser light, isn't it? Do, do we not have one good eye and one eye that's not so good? Usually everybody does. They have one eye that's better than the other. They have one ear that's better than the other. So there's a, there's a lot of similarities in God's kingdom. Um, God made two great lights to, uh, and he made the stars also. And God set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth and to what? Rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light from darkness. And God saw that it was good and the evening and the morning were the fourth day. So on day four, God created things that were for signs, seasons, days, and years. And it just so happens that these things that he created, the stars that are all in the heavens, they're innumerable. We have no idea how many of them there are. And that's the same number as the angels. They're innumerable. And stars and angels in the Bible are always the same thing. Always. When you see stars, you think angels. When you see angels, you think stars. Because that's what they are. Now, Ephesians 3. This is what uh, Kevin was, was mentioning a while ago. And this is how, this is, this is how I caught on to this. Because I was studying, I was studying to, to write that first book I wrote, the, the, by divine order. And I was looking for things of the number three. And I remembered that there was a verse somewhere that Paul wrote where he mentioned what I thought were three dimensions. And I was going to write this in my book on the number three. So I pulled up my, back then I was using Windows 98 and I was using uh, QuickVerse 3.0. And I pulled up quick verse and I looked for like depth and I found it in Ephesians and I, and I started counting that, that we, we may be able, be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth. And I'm going, there's three dimensions. And then I went, uh oh, there's four. And it threw me off. And I'm going, there's, this way and this way and this way. But where is that other way? I didn't see three dimensions in this verse. I saw four. 
And that really twisted me up. Because I couldn't figure it out. So I started, I looked on the internet. And I looked at what was known about the fourth dimension. I had never heard anything about the fourth dimension. I didn't know anything about it. And in about one or two days, from the Bible, God showed me practically everything that you can know about the fourth dimension from this book. Okay? And I was like, oh, this is the coolest thing in the whole world. So let me show you this. He mentions breadth, length, or breadth, length, depth. And we have a fourth dimension the Bible calls height. Write that, num write that word down, height. And when you go get your pure Bible search study software out, study the word height, heights, height, whatever. And you'll just be blown away. So let's look through our Bible for the word height to see what we'll find. Job 12 or 22, 12 is not God in the height of where? Heaven. Now, everybody all at once point in the direction that heaven is. Go. Okay. So if we were all to get on a, this table and the table flies up and it rises up through the air and it goes above the Earth's atmosphere. It's called the Kármán line. There's actually an end of the Earth. It's called the Kármán line. And that's where the Earth ends because there's no more air. And it, liter it literally is a legal jurisdiction because the United States owns the airspace over its own country until it gets to the Kármán line and then the United States has no say about what flies over the United States above the Kármán line. We can't tell Russia, we don't want you with satellites flying over the United States. We can't tell them that because we don't own space. We don't own the space above the earth. So now if we're up in space, Let's pretend we're on Apollo 11 and we're on our way to the moon. Which way is up? Which way is up? It's exactly right. Up is everywhere. So where then, once we leave the realm of the earth, where could we say heaven was? We wouldn't know. It's in a direction that we cannot fathom and we cannot comprehend. But the Bible does tell us that it, it is height. And God who lives there is the most what? High. What does Lucifer want to be? I will be like the Most High. Is not God in the height of heaven? Behold the height of the stars, how high they are. So, two things we know. God lives there, and all of the angels live there. They dwell in the height, in the fourth direction, the fourth dimension, the spiritual plane, the spiritual world, the spiritual whatever you want to call it, both God and the angels 
dwell there. Does that make sense to everybody? Do we dwell there? No, because we're hindered by three dimensions. Okay, so now watch this. For he hath looked down from the height of his sanctuary. Where's God's sanctuary? It's in the height. It's in the fourth dimension. From heaven did the Lord behold the earth. See how it ties them together? Height. It did it in this verse here too. The height of heaven. It does it here in this verse. The height of his sanctuary from heaven did the Lord behold the earth. So there is the first heaven, which is the atmosphere. The second heaven, which is the cosmos, the space where the moon is. And then there's the third heaven. So from where we're standing right now, how many places are there? There's earth, there's earth, the first heaven, the second heaven, and the third heaven. It's in the, God lives in the fourth place above us. Okay, praise you the Lord, praise the Lord from the heavens, praise him in the heights. There it puts them together again. Proverbs 25, 3, the heaven for height of the, and the earth for depth and the heart of kings is unsearchable. Heaven for height is unsearchable. We cannot fathom where heaven is or how to get there. This is why we need us a Moses to lead us into the promised land, a Joshua to take us there, a savior, Jesus, to show us the way because we don't know the way to get there. If we built the Starship Enterprise and had warp 10 capability, we would never be able to make it to heaven because we don't even know where it is. We just know from our standpoint, it's up there and it's not down there again the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain now I, I just think the words are there I think God put the words there for a reason an exceeding high mountain the mountain exceeds what high is and what did he show him when he got there all the kingdoms of the world and I believe it was all the kingdoms of the world past present and future isn't that something okay meanwhile back at the ranch yeah Matthew 4 8 again the devil take taketh him up it's talking about Jesus into an exceeding high mountain. The mountain exceeded high because he had to show him. I mean, can you climb Everest and see all the see all the kingdoms around the world? No. So what kind of mountain is it? that Jesus and the devil went up to where they could see all the kingdoms of the world. The flat earth people say it's, well, because the earth is flat, dude. But no. And I believe that he didn't just show him all the kingdoms of the world at that time. I believe he showed him every kingdom past present and future because when you leave our three-dimensional world time linear time doesn't exist outside of our three-dimensional world it doesn't exist okay so we're bound by as you mentioned a while ago, the weak and beggarly elements. We're bound, we're bound by vanity. We're bound by time. We're bound by three dimensions. We're bound by gravity. We're bound by the laws of physics that are apparent in a three-dimensional world. But if you're from the fourth spatial dimension, if you're from the spiritual realm, 
then you can see all the kingdoms of the world. And Luke says he showed it to them in a moment of time. Meaning where they were, time didn't really exist the way it exists here. I think stuff like that is cool. I do. I love it. Now, Daniel 2, and the fourth kingdom shall be as strong as iron, for as much as iron breaketh in pieces and subdueth all things, and as iron breaketh all these, shall it break in pieces and bruise. Whereas thou sawest the feet and toes, part of potter's clay and part of iron, the kingdom shall be divided, but there shall be in it the strength of the iron, for as much as thou sawest the iron mixed with miry clay, and as the toes of the feet were part of iron and part of clay, so the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly broken. Whereas thou sawest iron mixed with miry clay, they, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. And if you go to blueletterbible.org, and look at all the modern translations of Daniel chapter 2, verse 43. They've messed with that verse to where it doesn't say anything anywhere near what the King James says. Doesn't that make sense? So, fourth dimensional spirits mingling themselves with man's seed. Oh, by the way, man's seed. Adenine, cytosine, guanine, thymine. One, two, three, four. It's like it was made for a purpose. Wow. So I don't believe that fourth kingdom is from this world. I believe they're from a higher dimension. Ephesians 3, back to that, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height. God wants us, I believe, to understand that there's more around us, more to what's going on in this world than just the three-dimensional players of politics and banking and internet scams and COVID viruses and vaccines and things like that. There's more to this world than things like that. They're very deadly, evil, diabolical creatures that have powers that you don't have. So if Satan casts a fiery dart at you and you don't have a shield of faith against it, that dart is going to destroy your faith. Okay? I'm not as concerned and this may this may really burn some people i'm not near as concerned about fauci's needle as i am satan's needle i'm not supposed to be afraid of the one who can kill the body because let me let you all in on a little secret that I found in the King James Bible. We're all going to die. Right? Every one of us. I'm afraid of the one who can kill both body and soul with a fiery dart. Okay? Okay? Now, let me give you a little history of how, how man discovered the fourth dimension. It's actually a scientific 
reality. A guy by the name of August Mobius in 1827 had made the discovery that it would be possible to turn a three-dimensional object into its mirror image by means of a rotation in a four-dimensional space. Now, he said, mirror image. Is there anything in the Bible about a mirror, a glass? Okay, yes, there is. So, that's called what? Kevin, you know what that is? The Mobius Strip. Let me tell you a little story about this. Who's heard of Skinwalker Ranch? Okay, some of you guys have. Jeremy Corbell made a documentary about it. Um, it was um, Robert Bigelow who bought the ranch and set up scientific teams on it. When he first bought the ranch, there was a scientist that they brought in that was a big skeptic. He said, he told Bigelow, he said, I think you just wasted a ton of money and you're still just blowing money on something that doesn't even exist. And they took this scientist, this physicist to this ranch and they're showing them the different homesteads and they were in one of the homesteads and he didn't tell anybody then at the time, but while this skeptical physicist was standing there and they were all telling him about weird events that had taken place at this particular spot, he was seeing out of the corner of his eye an illuminated Mobius strip that just showed up in the room while he was standing there, Kevin. And he's like, he's not saying anything, but he's seeing this. He doesn't know if anybody else sees it. And after they, of course, left, he then told, did you guys see what I saw? They said, no, what? He said, I know I saw it. It was a Mobius strip. And what this symbol represents is infinity. Because it never ends. It's like the secret to eternity or the secret maybe to eternal life. Then E.A. Abbott, a Victorian schoolmaster and clergyman who published in 1884 his famous novel, Flatland. Now, there is a three-dimensional world and there is a two-dimensional world, okay? Do you see the image on this screen? The image on this screen is two-dimensional because if I run my hand over it, I can't feel it. I can't feel the guy's face and yet, my three-dimensional hand is not in any way impeded or affected by this two-dimensional world. You see, I can appear and disappear in this two-dimensional world, can't I? Okay? I'm trying to show you something, because this is going to get cool in a minute. I can affect this two-dimensional world. But this two-dimensional world has no effect on me whatsoever. I can become a temporary part. And if I'm a part of this two-dimensional world and this two-dimensional world, let's say that there are little, let's say that this guy's a real guy in a two-dimensional world and I put my hand over his eyes. He can't see all of my hand, can he? He can only see the part of my hand that touches the two-dimensional plane of his existence. Is that why we could only, or Moses could only see God's backside? Could very well be. Could very well be. Okay? So we say stars are angels. Okay? But what is it that we can see of stars? Only points of light. So is it possible that there's more to these stars 
that we just can't see because we're not in their fourth dimensional world. Isn't that cool? Okay. Now, watch this. In a two-dimensional world, or let's say in a three-dimensional world, my three-dimensional hand is casting a shadow. How many dimensions are there to that shadow? Two. Because if you were to come over here and try to feel my shadow up against the screen, you wouldn't be able to feel it, would you? So I want you to understand this. A three-dimensional object casts a two-dimensional shadow, doesn't it? So what would a fourth dimensional object cast as a shadow in a three-dimensional world? A three-dimensional shadow. I want you to hang on to that thought because that's actually in your Bible. It is. Okay. Then Charles Denton in his books, uh, The New Era of Thought in 1888, and the fourth dimension in 1904 theorized that the three dimensionality of space is a necessary condition of man's consciousness. However, it is necessary only to normal awareness. Altered states of consciousness, such as those experienced by mystics and psychics, are acquired four dimensional perspectives. Or, he didn't know this then, those who have taken psychedelics like LSD, or ayahuasca, they have four dimensional thoughts and they see into a four dimensional world. I, I'd like to hear what that was. I'm, I'm nosy. Have you, have you heard Cliff Hyde? No, uh-uh. Yeah. He also, when he said he was young, he talked to a being. Mm -hmm. From another dimension. Yes. From a different dimension. dimension. Different dimension. Exactly. And I found that so fascinating because, I mean, you know, it's everything that yeah. you were talking about. But. Let, let, me, let me do this again. As I run my hand across this, can this two-dimensional world stop me from moving through any part of this two-dimensional world? Okay, so let's talk about people who say they have been abducted by aliens. They say these little gray beings show up in their room, elevate them up out of their bed, Take them through the wall of their house and up into a ship. How is that possible that a three-dimensional object can pass through another three-dimensional object? It's not. Apparently, these spirits have the ability to project or cast something around these people that they're abducting to where they can move them through three-dimensional objects with no hindrance whatsoever. In other words, do you think there could very well be spirits in this room right now? Did anybody open the door and let them in? No, they can just come in and if they don't want to be seen, would they be seen? No, not at all. You see, I can put my hand here 
or my eye here and I can see everything going on in flatland, but they can't see me because they can only see in two directions, this way and this way. They can't see that way, okay? Then Hinton came up with the tesseract, a cube within a cube that when the tesseract is rotated, the inner cube comes out and vice versa. This is supposed to be a moving uh, GIF or whatever you call it, but it's not working on here. What movies have talked about tesseracts? Anybody? All the, the whole Marvel film series, starting with Captain America, going all the way through to the end game, was about a tesseract and it had a power source, an energy source that would have solved, that cube could have powered everything in this world forever, okay? Because its energy was from a fourth dimensional place, okay? Um, then Charles Dodson, Charles Dodson was uh, a Church of England minister, but he was also a master mathematician. Uh, some say that he had a form of autism and made him think a little bit weird. But when he wrote Alice through the looking glass, remember what we heard a while ago? That if you could, isn't it interesting when you look into a mirror that when you raise your right hand, the guy in the mirror has raised his left hand? Yes. Yeah. So the guy in the mirror is our exact opposite, isn't he? And there's scripture. There's scripture that's going to tell you that. But... Charles Dodson wrote under the name Lewis Carroll, and when he wrote about Alice's adventures through the looking glass, he was theorizing what it would be like for a person to go into the fourth dimension. And that's how come that whole book and story is weird, because that's what he was theorizing, which led to H.G. Wells coming up with this idea of someone building a time machine, someone who had the ability to go into the fourth dimension and, and move around back or forwards through time at will. Because they're in a higher dimension, they can pick what part of history or the future they want to be in. And that those thoughts led to a Russian mathematician, Herman Minkowski, and his idea of the four-dimensional space-time continuum. And it's now, it's an accepted physical fact that space, three-dimensional space and time are the same thing. In fact, what does Genesis 1 say? In the beginning, there's time, God created the heavens, there's space, and the earth, there's matter. Time and space and matter, mass, are all part of this world that we live in, and you can't have one without the other. We are bound to this world, and we are bound by time, we can't even go back a second in time, much less go back 20, 30 years and erase the mistakes that we made back then. And then which one of us can see five seconds into the future? We can guess what's going to happen five seconds into the future, but we just don't know what could happen five seconds into the future. You didn't know I was going to do that, did you? We can't do that. We're all, it's all connected together. Then that led to Einstein coming up with energy 
equals matter times the speed of the constant speed of light squared. And I don't know what that means. But it's the basis for quantum physics. Now, here's some basic ideas of the fourth dimension. A fourth spatial direction that we cannot currently perceive or point to in our three-dimensional space. So number one, none of us know where the fourth direction is. I can point that way and I can point that way and I can point that way and I can point that way. Those are all three-dimensional directions. But I cannot for the life of me tell you what direction the fourth spatial world is in. Number two, a fourth dimensional object is not bound by three dimensional space. So remember what we said about the fourth being the son of God in the fiery furnace. Was Jesus or any of the three affected by the three dimensional world around them in that furnace? Not in any way, shape, or form. So can we shoot devils with bullets? Can't do it. They, they, it, they will not be affected by it. Which is why the armor that Jesus told us to put on is not any kind of armor that you can buy at an outfitter store, Walmart, Bass Pro Shops, nothing like that. You cannot buy the armor that Paul told us to put on with money because they do not exist in this world. They are prayer, they are Bible reading, they are the Word of God. This is our shield of faith. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. Feed shot with the preparation of the gospel. The gospel is the, the word of God. Helmet of salvation. We're saved by the word of God. Everything about this is the Bible. And those who refuse to believe the words of this book, they're going to be destroyed by a much stronger army. Upon entering the fourth dimension, you become your opposite or mirror image. You become the opposite of yourself. The barrier between dimensions is likened to a mirror or a water surface. Who knows what scrying is? What is it? Yeah. They'll either put mercury or water and they'll, or a crystal ball. It's the same idea. They gaze into that so that they can see into a, the spiritual world. And then by doing, this is what, this is what, um, oh, what's his name? Um, the guy who came up with Enochian language. Who remembers who that is? John D. He was the mathematician, astrologer, wizard counselor to Elizabeth I. And he was, him and another guy were scrying in a scrying bowl full of mercury. And they were talking to angels. And these angels were telling them that the angels speak a language that nobody on the earth knows. And that if man could learn this language, man could use this language to create anything he wanted to because that was the language that God used to create the universe. They're setting them up. They were setting them up. And D thought he had it, so he created what he called the Enochian language. Okay? Now, according to the Bible, what group is it that speaks a language that nobody knows? It's in Deuteronomy 28, and God said, Because you will not obey my statutes, then a nation shall come from afar, from the end of heaven, a nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. He was talking about a spiritual nation that's coming. Okay? 
Um, a fourth dimensional object casts a three dimensional shadow. We've already seen that, right? So get, get ready for this. The first one. So then the first one was four spatial direction that we cannot currently perceive. So then after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. In other words, he disappeared out of their sight. Okay, because we cannot currently perceive or point to where Jesus, all we can do is go, he's up there. Okay, the second one, not bound by three dimensions. And we talked about the fourth is like the son of God. So they were not bound by the three dimensional physical laws. That's why they did not smell of smoke. They were not burnt. They were not affected by the fire in any way. Now, let me tell you something. Those of you who are scared of the future. If God can save Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. From a fiery furnace. Is he going to save us too? Yeah. So what are we worried about? I'm trying to get everybody that I talk to now to calm down and let you know God's got it all in his hand. And he always takes care of his people, doesn't he? After that, he appeared in another form unto two of them as they walked and went into the country and they went and told it out to the residue and neither believed on them. How did he appear? in another form because four dimensional objects can do that Luke twenty four thirty, and it came to pass as he sat at meat with them he took bread and blessed it and break and gave to them and their eyes were open and they knew him and he vanished out of their sight see Jesus is still the son of God who can appear and disappear at will because He's not from here. Amen? And then, and the fourth, what, what watch of the night? The fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them doing what? Walking on the sea. He was breaking the laws of physics by walking on water. Because this world is, was not his home. He could break the laws of physics if he wanted to. And he even taught Peter how to do it for a little bit. Okay? The mirror. For now we see through a glass darkly. But then... Face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even as also I am known. Look at 2 Corinthians 3.18. But we all with open face beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord. When you're looking in the mirror, you know who you're seeing? The opposite of you. And you know who that is? It's Jesus Christ. Because you're a sinner He's sinless. You're mortal. He's immortal. You're man. He's God. When you look in a mirror, you're seeing the exact opposite of who you are. And that's why Paul said that. We are, we are with open face, beholding as in a glass. He's talking about a looking glass, a mirror. The glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the spirit of the Lord. And notice this. Job said, how hast thou with him spread out the sky, which is strong and as a molten looking glass? The sky is a mirror. And it's the barrier between us and heaven. 
Uh, Ezekiel 1.5, also out of the midst came the likeness of four living creatures. Uh, Ezekiel 1.22, and the likeness of the firmament pin upon the heads of the living creature was as the color of a terrible crystal, a molten glass stretched over their heads above. Uh, let's see here. I want to get to this. Yeah. First, Jonas was three days and three nights in the whale's belly. So shall the son of man be in the heart of the earth. How many chambers does the heart have? Four. Okay. Then the shadow part. Let no man therefore judge you in meat or drink or in respect of a holy day or the new moon or the Sabbath days, which are a shadow of things to come. What is the Sabbath, the uh, feast of uh, Passover, the Old Testament tabernacle? You know what it was? It was a shadow a three-dimensional shadow of the real fourth-dimensional temple of God that's in heaven. Remember, a three-dimensional object casts a two-dimensional shadow. If it's a fourth-dimensional object, then it casts a three-dimensional shadow. And it, wouldn't it be silly if you walked up to me and I looked down at the floor and I saw your shadow and I started talking to your shadow. And then I said, oh, I want to hug you. And I got down on the floor and I embraced your shadow. You'd think, boy, you're stupid. It's the same thing as when people go back to the Old Testament and say, we need to keep the law in order to please God. Because everything back here was only a shadow of things that are in the book of Revelation. Look at this verse. For if he were on earth, he should not be a priest, seeing that there are priests that offer gifts according to the law, whose servant is the example and shadow of what kind of things? Heavenly things. As Moses was admonished of God when he was about to make the tabernacle for, see, saith he, that thou make all things according to the pattern showed to thee in the mount. Hebrews 10.1, for the law having a shadow of good things to come. And not the very image of the things. So what? Let's say that, let's say that next week somebody finds the Ark of the Covenant that Moses made in the wilderness. Do you know what that would mean to us? Nothing. Because our Ark of the Covenant is up in heaven. And that earthly Ark of the Covenant is just a shadow, three-dimensional shadow of a heavenly Ark of the Covenant. The one that has our covenant in it, which is the covenant of grace, not the covenant of works. So the law equals the shad, the Old Testament, the shadow, earthly things. The New Testament represents heavenly things. The Old Testament points to the gospel. The gospel does not point back to the Old Testament. And that's what all the Hebrew roots people say. Does anybody have any questions on the fourth dimension? So does it make sense now that... These unidentified flying objects can be seen flying in patterns. David Fravor was the commander. You know who I'm talking about. He was on the USS Nimitz carrier group. And he's the one that encountered the Tic Tac UFO. And his response to that was, I want to fly one of those things. But he said that thing was, when he saw it with his eyes, he said it was like uh, somebody had teed off a golf ball in a tile bathroom. It was just bouncing all around, all over the place, doing this and that and the other. The, the, if that was a human inside of there, they would have been killed by the way that thing was moving. But because it was, 
that when they first noticed it, the radar technician saw it because their radar only goes up to 80,000 feet. When he saw it at 80,000 feet, he saw it go from 80,000 feet and in less than a second down to the sea. And he's like, there is no way that that just happened. It violates everything we know. You can't, we can't even fly a plane that fast down to the ground. Why? Because at some point the air is still pushing up against the plane. But this thing went from 80,000 feet down to sea level in less than a second. Why? Because it's not from this three-dimensional space. It's from a spiritual place. And more than likely, it itself was a spirit. So now does some of that stuff make sense to you? Okay, any questions? Fourth dimension, laws of physics, UFOs. Yes. Yeah. Robert Lazar, Bob Lazar and other people have said that at the main headquarter building at Area 51, there is a giant statue of a white rabbit. Yeah. But do you get it now? Because that white rabbit represents the rabbit from Lewis Carroll's, Charles Dodson's, Alice, going down the rabbit hole into the fourth dimension. And whoever put that up there knew exactly that they were dealing with, you see, we, according to Lazar, he said we've got nine intact UFOs that we were trying to work on. One of them, he said, they found in an archeological dig. It had been there for thousands of years. And he said, our guys trying to fly it, we, just, we had, he said, this is back in the 80s, they couldn't figure it out. And he said, I'm looking at this thing. And he said, I get to look inside of it. And he said, again, I see no steering wheel. I see no computer keyboard. I don't see any wires. I don't see anything in this thing other than three little chairs and something that looks like they put their hands on. And all of a sudden, it just takes off for them. It's because their minds somehow become one with that and it does whatever they want it to do. Weird stuff. But now you know the biblical basis for what they're able to do. Alright?